Finally, on August 14th, they agreed to an unconditional surrender, but people had been on pins and needles for several days, and there were even a couple of false announcements that they had officially surrendered. So, when they did actually surrender, this scene was repeated across the country. Now, this is Times Square in New York City. And, you know, you, you see a lot of pictures from Times Square uh, from that day, including the famous one of the sailor kissing the nurse. Uh, you don't often get to hear what it sounded like. Voice of America, which was a new uh, entity at that point, had a soundtrack in Times Square. And they were interviewing in pe people in English and many other languages as well, uh, because it was being broadcast overseas. So we're going to hear a, uh, a description in English from Vincent Alexander of um, uh, VOA, and that's going to be followed by a uh, clip of a uh, German broadcaster when this would have been broadcast uh, in Europe. I believe his name was Martin Richter. And uh, I don't speak German, but at the end, uh, listen carefully, because he's going to say something in English. Here's the German correspondent. I've got to get a translation of that. I can pick up little pieces of it. I don't know exactly what he's saying. If anyone speaks German, I'd love to know. Um, so uh, this meant that it was time to come home for many soldiers. Here's the reaction of Willie and Joe when they were told they were going home. But oh, the caption is, I see you told them they're going home. <laughs> Um, but it wasn't always that simple, you know. Uh, you often had to wait a long time. Uh, your discharge didn't come through right away. You couldn't get onto a uh, troop train or a, a plane to, to get home. Uh, lots of things could happen. I don't remember no delays getting us over here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, when you did get back to the States, you went to a separation center. They had a number of these across the country. And uh, spent, uh, <clears throat> could spend a while there because um, you got a physical examination, job counseling, all kinds of things. And they were totally up your points. You needed 85 discharge points to go home. And your points were based on your time of service, the kind of service, how much combat you'd seen. Um, but there were also um, personal considerations, like uh, whether you had uh, children or not. And um, there was one standard question that they, uh, every soldier had to answer. Next question. Do you want to stay in the Army? It says here, I got to ask. <laughs> Um, so this is again Yank Magazine article about a separation center, what you could expect uh, when you were there. And uh, oops. Once they were through with you, in the separation center, chances are you were going to go home. Two weeks ago, Oops. Like Radio. I'm sorry. Two weeks ago, like Radio. Okay, I've got a little uh, documentary that the AAF uh, produced about uh, these separation centers, so we can hear some of that. Two weeks ago, like Radio already stepped up tempo demobilization. The Army Air Forces announced the establishment of 32 AAF separation centers around the country. Now, by Army Wire Reporter, for the first time on the air, your AAF takes you on an actual tour through one of these installations. Go ahead, Mitchell Field. Yes, sir. 